Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. I hope that you had a wonderful week. Looking forward to a good weekend. Of course, the edited version of this drops on Sunday, so hopefully you had a good weekend. Sorry for that reminder. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you'd like to come and catch the show live, of course, you can do that. And we have the Linux and we have our main uh, main whole new show, which is privacy, security, AI, business, silly, some variation thereof. And then occasionally we talk about banned topics. But we're going to go ahead and talk today about Linux news. And first up, there is a pretty big and ugly bug in the glibc. So this is a package that is in almost every Linux distribution. And <clears throat> it controls basic things like searching and showing files, like all of the basic core things a file needs to do uses this. So the only good news about this is they do, don't seem to find a way to execute this uh, escalation remotely. So somebody have to have physical access to your machine. But if they do get physical access to your machine, then they can go ahead and gain root access through the log making system. Now this was introduced in 2.37. It was rolled back to 2.36 and I believe it's also in 2.38. So hopefully the next version will actually solve this bug. So just be aware that there are going to be a number of Linux distributions. If somebody can gain physical access to the machine through this particular library, in which case uh, somebody could deal with something. So keep an eye on for that. They say uh, they tested vulnerabilities across Debian 12 and 13, Ubuntu 23.04, 23.10, Fedora 37 to 39. And they say other distributions are probably also impacted because nearly everything is going to run this application in one of those vulnerable versions. So be aware of that and keep an eye out for an update for the glibc that uh, hopefully that will be patched sometime in the near future. Next up, Raspberry Pi is planning to do a London IPO, so going public over on the London Stock Exchange. The CEO says no change expected in focus. As far as me as a Raspberry Pi user, I think that this is probably going to be an okay thing. I don't see any huge negatives. Usually when a company goes public, they tend to be a little bit more resistant to some of the crazier market factors. And they do tend to make sure that the image stays good enough and the products start working and things like this. And this might give a little bit more power. Now, some people disagree and say it could be a, a more net negative for Raspberry Pi. We don't know yet, but we'll see. They cited some positives as they did seem to have a strong release on Raspberry Pi 5. Now, Vilros, I got an email just the other day that Vilros does have the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5s back in stock, and then they sent me a coupon code. I'm really thinking about buying one. What do you think, guys? Should I go ahead and buy me a Raspberry Pi 5? Maybe I can retrofit that into my main work system and we'll test out power solutions. I don't know. That's my big concern is power solutions. But hey, if I order one now and it sits in there and then I have three or four months to figure out a power solution for it, that might work. I'm pretty sure I could figure that out. It's not like I built a tiny home in three months. Mm. All right. Well... <laughs> That's what Raspberry Pi is up to. I think overall going public is probably going to be a good thing for Raspberry Pi. So we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, for anybody using Zorin and wanted to go to the Zorin OS 17. Now, some people did say that they tried it out and didn't like it as much. Others have said they want to stay on 16 for a little while longer. But if you are on 16 and you are interested in going to 17 just this week, they released the updater that's going to allow you to go ahead and migrate your system directly without reinstalling everything. So uh, this is going to work on the Zorin Core, OS Core, and the Pro users through the Zorin Upgrader utility. So when you go in there to do your upgrades, you should see the option to go up and see uh, see the ability here to upgrade to Zorin OS 7. So in the event, you're going to want to do that. I had a look at Zorin OS 7, and outside of a few minor criticisms, I thought it was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool distro. So Zorin 17, hey, you kind of have my vote there a little bit. It is overall a good good distro. It has been a good good distro. My biggest criticism of it is that the uh, it tries to do everything, and it'd be better if we had the ability to set it up and then maybe remove all the excess things, which could be construed to as bloat to some people because does you really sit in there and tweak around your system all the time? 
That's a good question. I don't know. And up to our feature story, Budgie is targeting going Wayland only this year. Uh, that's their, their kind of their goal, whether or not they're going to hit that goal is a different story, but that's kind of what they're trying to do. Now, that being said, um, they are actually going about this a little bit different way in a way that I think makes the overall best sense. What they're using is there is a package from XFCE, uh, it's in here somewhere. There's a package from XFCE that allows them, oh, you know what? I think it was on the, the main article, um, Okay, so it's going to allow a cross compatibility between Wayland and X sessions handled inside. This is XFCE's way of handling Wayland while maintaining compatibility with X. So basically, there that desktop is building some packages which are going to be kind of like an interfacer between the two. As I, I I dug several articles deep there to dig in on it, but I think that the original blog post on the Wayland support is the one that covered it. I don't think the exact package you're using here, but it's from XFCE, and they are bringing this into Budgie to hopefully have the ability to drop X altogether, but still not lose the ability for X packages to work. So that might actually be the best of all worlds. So I'm going to keep a very close eye on Budgie this year. And when I see that there's a development version of this running up that I have the capability of working with, I might go ahead and test it out. Budgie, as I have said, uh, if it wasn't for Cinnamon, I'd probably shoot to be running Budgie as I really, really like it as a desktop. Now, it going Wayland only is a little bit of a concern because I'm just not sure Wayland is completely ready for full-time, primetime, exclusive use. But, hey, as, uh, if they have a good lofty goal of trying to do that, then we'll see what happens as they go ahead and do that. And for the people I know, uh, the last video that I did with Linux Mint and Wayland, I had a bunch of trolls in there going, you just hate Wayland. I don't hate Wayland. I just don't want... Wayland to come over and everybody switch to that and then drop X because what happens is the compatibility that we have developed and built up over the last five years in Linux is effectively lost. And that really is uh, part of the, the issue there. So that's uh, what we have to say about that. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a subscribe star page. You can jump on over there to subscribe star uh, dot com slash switched to Linux. You can jump on over there. We are doing short stories. And uh, of course, I did a short story on some digital uh, stocking utilities uh, last uh, last time. And uh, we'll see what the story is this week yet. We really will, because I actually haven't sit down and figured out which one of these notes on my wall is going to be the next story. Story. Maybe I should put it to the vote with the supporters. Stay tuned for that. But uh, you can help support the channel over there, subscribestar.com slash switched to Linux. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.